this week on Faith Lip. When I pray, I will break barrenness. Come on, say it louder. Say, when I pray, I will break barrenness. This down, please. In the simplest term, barrenness is the binding. Let's, let's talk about the biological barrenness. A woman that can't have a child. Barrenness is the binding of a womb. You hear me? Biological barrenness is the binding of a womb. I mean, she's got all the equipments. She's got the womb. She's got everything. But something in the realm of the invisible is stopping her from having that child. That is, <clears throat> let's write this down, please. You, you got to understand this. It is the binding of a life, the binding of a womb. Territorial barrenness is the binding of the ground. Business a barrenness is the binding. Something in the realm of the invisible is binding your business. Something in the realm of invisible is binding your life. Number two, write this down, please. Number two, now every word which I'm going to say to you have been carefully thought and weighed, and I mean exactly every word that I say. Number two, barrenness is a very subtle, subtle, and very aggressive spirit that seeks to rape and to violate the very first words of Elohim to humanity. Let me say it again. The spirit of barrenness is a very subtle why do i say subtle because if you're struggling right now you think well everybody else is struggling so it's normal no it is not normal it is very subtle but yet very aggressive because it seeks to rape and to violate the very first words of elohim to humanity the very first words of elohim to humanity in Genesis chapter 1 verse 28, what does it say? And God blessed them and God said to them, what did God say? Be fruitful. You and I, we are under a mandate to be fruitful. Amen? Be fruitful and do what? And, come on, shout it, and do what? Multiply. Folk. Folks, God is not in the subtraction business. He's not in the division business. God is in the multiplication business. He will multiply your bread and your water. He'll multiply grace and peace beyond you. He'll multiply favor to your life. He'll multiply money to you. He'll multiply your gold and your silver. Say amen. amen. So this is why when you are not being productive... And you're not fruitful in your finances or in your life. You are frustrated. And this is why I tell you, frustration is an indication that you are not in your place of destination. If you want to break frustration, you got to enter into your destiny. Say amen, saints. Now, 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 now. Number three, write this down, please. Number three. Barrenness is defying the laws of Genesis. Now, what's the laws of Genesis? The laws of beginnings. Number one, everything reproduces after its kind. Number two, God says be fruitful and multiply. Number three, as long as the earth remain, there'll be what? Seed time and harvest. So the spirit of barrenness seeks to challenge and to stop and defy these three laws of Genesis. Number four, write this down please. Number four, barrenness is fruitless labor. Fruitless labor. No matter what you do, you don't see nothing to it. I mean, some of you are doing overtime, double time, extra time, and any kind of time you can find, but there's still more days left than what you got money left at the end of the month. Peter summed it well. Master, we have toil all night long and what got nothing to show for it it's not that the man was lazy the man was not the man was working but he got nothing to show for it and that's where so many people are today they're working overtime double time but they've got nothing to show for it 
Are you hearing me, saints? Now, let me show you where many believers are today. Very quickly, please. Let me show you where many believers are. Go with me, please, to Luke chapter 1, verse 5 till verse 11. Verse 5 till verse 11, it says, Now, there was in the days of Herod, the king of Judea, a certain priest. A certain what? Priest. Everybody say priest. Come on, talk to me. Say priest. A certain priest, praise God, named Zacharias. What is his name? All right, now hold that thought in your mind. And he was of the course of Abia, and his wife was of the daughters of Aaron. Now, who was Aaron? Aaron was the first great high priest, right? And her name was Elizabeth. Now, look at this family here. Look at this couple here. He's from a priesthood family, and she's also from a priesthood family, right? And her name was Elizabeth. Everybody shout, Elizabeth. All right, next verse, please. Look what it says here. And they were both righteous. Say righteous. Come on, talk to me. Say righteous. So now we've got so far, let's build their CV. They're, they're priests and they are what? Righteous. Right? They were both righteous before God walking in how many commandments? All the commandments of God, and when it comes to the ordinance of the Lord, they were blameless. Is that right? All right, so now look at this. Zacharias is a priest in the, in the course of Abia. Elizabeth is also from the priest family. Her great, 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 great granddad was Aaron, right? So they're both priests. Secondly, it says they are righteous. Come on, say righteous. Number three, they are obeying all the commandments of God, right? Number four, they are blameless before God. Isn't that wonderful? They're priests, they're righteous, obeying all of God's commandments, and they are blameless. But look at the next verse. They got a problem. But they had, what? No child because Elizabeth was barren. Hmm. Priest, but barren. Righteous, but barren. Obeying all the commandments of God, but nonetheless, barren. Blameless before God, but nonetheless, barren. And that's where many of us are today. We've been made kings and priests. Is that right? But yet we find ourselves in a place of barrenness, of fruitlessness. Are you hearing me, somebody? But let me tell you the good news. Barrenness can be broken. Oh, your amen is too small tonight. I said, barrenness can be broken. Amen. Come on, lift up your hands and say, I will break barrenness. Now, barrenness is the spirit of stagnancy. Keeping you in the same position. When God says, you will go from glory to glory, from faith to faith. Amen. Say amen. Come on, lift up your hands. Say, I will break barrenness. Let me tell you this. Sarah broke barrenness. Hannah broke barrenness. Elizabeth broke barrenness. Can I hear an amen, somebody? Samson's mother broke barrenness. If Sarah can do it, Hannah can do it, Samson's mother can do it, and Elizabeth can do it, God is no respecter of person. You are next in line, and you will break it. And this is what you got to know, that any time anybody ever broke barrenness in the Bible, they did not just bring to birth an ordinary child. And so, are you hearing me, somebody? Amen. When Sarah broke barrenness, she brought to birth the promised seed, Isaac. Amen. When Hannah broke barrenness, she brought to birth Samuel. He was a king maker. He anointed Saul and he anointed David to be king. And the Bible says his word never fell to the ground. When Samson's mother broke barrenness, she brought to birth something that killed more of his enemies while he was dead than while he was alive. And when Elizabeth broke barrenness she brought to birth john the baptist that jesus himself said among those born among women there's no one greater than john the baptist i want to tell you this year you will break barrenness and something supernatural something amazing is going to come out of you say amen somebody come on touch your neighbor say i will break barrenness say it again i will break barrenness Oh, hallelujah. 
something supernatural, something amazing, something that will make a king in your life is about to come out of you. Hallelujah. Say hallelujah. Now, now, so how did they break barrenness? Okay, now first of all, what was, his, what was the priest's name? Zacharias. What was his wife's name? Elizabeth. Zacharias means God has remembered. Elizabeth means oath of God. So when you put the two together, it would say God has remembered his oath. And God has remembered his covenant. But it looked like God had forgotten them. Are you hearing me, somebody? I want to tell you tonight, God has not forgotten you. Come on, lift up your hands and say, God has not forgotten me. If Zacharias, if Zacharias can break it, you can break it. If Elizabeth, amen, was past her age, can break barrenness, I don't care how old you are, you are going to break barrenness. Folks, let me tell you this, your best days are not behind you. Your best days are ahead of you. Come on, touch your neighbor. Tell him, tell him, my best days are ahead of me. In fact, come on, just elbow them. Tell them, you ain't seen nothing yet. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. Glory be to God forever. You ain't seen nothing yet. Praise God. Now, how did they break barrenness? Well, how did Zacharias broke barrenness? Well, the Bible tells you, look at the first. Uh, the very first words of God to humanity was be fruitful and multiply. God hates barrenness. Barrenness is a curse. Today, I have an offer for you of a book, my book, Exposing and Overcoming the Spirit of Barrenness, and then this brand new CD, A New Season of Fruitfulness. You need to order this book right now and this CD. The price is $25. The book is Exposing and Overcoming the Spirit of Barrenness. It is time for you to break barrenness out of your life. It is time for you to break fruitlessness out of your life. It is time for you to be fruitful, for your life to be fruitful, for your family to be fruitful, for your business to be fruitful, for your church to be fruitful. So order this book right now, Exposing and Overcoming the Spirit of Barrenness, plus this new CD, A New Season of Fruitfulness. The price is only $25 plus shipping and handling. Call the number on your screen, 502-523-4407, or you can order online at glenarecchion.org. Well, how did Zacharias broke barrenness? Well, the Bible tells you, look at verse, uh, verse 8, and it came to pass that while he executed the priest's office before God in the order of his course, Look at verse, verse, verse 9. According to the custom of the priest's office, his lot was to burn incense. His lot was to burn incense. Now, Psalms 141, verse 2 says, Let my prayer be set forth before thee as incense. So, he offered up incense. So, how did he break barrenness? How did Hannah break barrenness? She began to pray. Can I hear an amen, somebody? Now lift up your hands. Say, when I pray, come on, talk to me. Say, when I pray, I will break barrenness. Come on, say it louder. Say, when I pray, I will break barrenness. Write this down, please. When you pray, God will open up things. Number one, he will open up the heavens. Praise God. Amen. Somebody say, hallelujah. Well, Jesus was baptized and praying, the heaven opened and the Holy Ghost descended in bodily shape. When the heaven is open, your miracle will come down in bodily shape. And there is nothing the devil can do about it. Say hallelujah. So lift up your hands and say, when I pray, God will open up the heavens. Then say, when I pray, God will open up doors. And then put your hand on your belly. Say, when I pray, God will open up the womb of my life. 
Hallelujah. Amen. Business will come out of you. Kids will come out of you. Money will come out of you. Say amen to that. Hallelujah. So prayer will break barrenness. There is a key. There's a connection between prayer and fruitfulness. Amen. Number two, are you ready? Are you ready to shout? All right, look at Isaiah 54. Now, and I, I said, are you ready to shout now? All right, glory to God. Isaiah 54. Woo, what's the first word? I can't hear you. What's the, come on, look on your Bible. What's the first word? Sing, oh barren. It didn't say, oh barren, wait till you have the baby. Then sing, that's not faith. When you don't have a child, when you ain't got no money in your pocket, it's time to sing. Sing, oh barren, you that didn't bear, break forth into what? And what's the next two words? And cry aloud. Woo! One Bible says, and shout. Come on, say shout. Hmm. If the first key to breaking barrenness is your prayer, the second key to break barrenness is your praise. Come on, lift up your hands. Say, my praise. I can't hear you. Say, my praise. My shout will break barrenness. He says, and shout aloud, you that did not travail with child, for more are the children of the desolate than the children of the married wife, saith the Lord. Amen? Amen? Now look at verse 2, please. Look at verse 2. Oh, everybody read verse 2 out loud. What does it say? Come on, talk. What does it say? Enlarge. <laughs> Touch your neighbor. Tell him, give me room. Come on, tell him, give me room. Hallelujah. Enlarge the place of your tent. Let them stretch forth the curtains of your habitations. Spare not. Lengthen your cords and strengthen your stakes. Hallelujah. Hey, look at me. I'm going to tell you right now. The next house that you go into, the biggest curtain that you got in your house right now will not be big enough for your kitchen. Come on, lift up your hands and say, I receive that. Hallelujah. Look at the next verse. Why? For thou shalt break forth on the right hand and you will break forth on the left. Your business is about to break forth on the left and your business is about to break forth on the right. Shout amen. I said shout amen. Now go back to verse 2 please. Verse 1 again. Go back to verse 1. Are you ready saints? Are you ready? Are you sure you're ready? Look at that verse. It says, sing, O oh barren, you that didn't bear, do what? Break forth into singing and do what? Shout. Huh. Tell your neighbor, it's time to shout. Oh, I can't hear you. Come on, tell me, it's time to shout. Huh. The, Bible says there's, the Bible says there's a shout of a king within Judah, right? There's a shout of a lion within Judah. Let me ask you tonight. Are you a lion or are you a goat? And I can't hear you. Are you a lion or are you a goat tonight? If you tell some people to shout, well, praise the Lord. <laughs> are you ready to shout tonight? Stand on your feet. Stand on your feet. Are you ready to shout tonight? How many of you are ready to break barrenness out of your life? How many of you here tonight, you're, you're tired of struggling tonight, but you want to break out on the right and you want to break out on the left? Right? No, 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 listen to me very carefully. I preached this a few weeks ago, well, last week rather, in Nigeria. Man, when I told them it's time to shout, they didn't just shout. They picked up chairs. They ran around the place. And they scream. Our preachers in Chicago. And they forgot that they were white Americans. And they began to scream and shout. Our preachers in London. They forgot that they were British. And they began to scream and shout. Joburg, I'm going to ask you a question. Are you going to let Lagos outshout you? 
Are you going to let Chicago outpraise you? Are you going to let England outpraise you? Now I'm going to count one, two, three. When I say three, I want to hear the loudest shout. I want to hear the biggest praise. I want you to jump up and down and give God praise and break that spirit of barrenness. Now wait, 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 wait. Listen, wait, wait. I don't want you to be civilized. You're going to give God a Shabbat praise. You're going to give God a crazy. You can spin around. You're going to make some noise because you want to break out of barrenness. I'm going to count one, two, three. Are you ready? Yeah. Joe Berg, are you ready? Yeah. One, two, three. Shout! Shout! Come on, shout unto God with the voice of triumph. Shout, for the Lord has given you the city. Shout and break barrenness. Come on, you can jump up and down. You can give God praise. You can give God praise. Shout hallelujah. Woo! Shout out to God. Shout out to God. Come on, South Africa. You can shout and give God praise. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. Your walls are coming down. Your walls are coming down. Listen. Don't stop. Don't stop. Stop on the devil. Jump up and down. Give God praise. Shout hallelujah. You're breaking out of poverty tonight. You're breaking out of lack tonight. You're moving into prosperity. You're moving into promotion. Shout yes. Shout. Hallelujah. Come on, dance before the Lord. Spin before the Lord. Dance before, jump up and down. Your walls are coming down tonight. Barrenness has been destroyed tonight. Your business will break through the night. Your life will break through the night. Amen. Touch your neighbor to them. I've broken barrenness. You will no longer be stagnant. Hallelujah. Can we jump up and down and dance before the Lord? Are you ready? Come on now, jump up and down and dance before the Lord. Give God a crazy praise tonight. Give God a shout of praise. Your blessings are coming through. Your blessings are coming through. Your prayer, your prayer, your praise. Number three, Elisha says, bring me a cruise of salt. And he began to pour the salt, covenant. He says, from this day, there'll be no more death, no more barrenness. So what breaks barrenness is a prophetic declaration. You're going to prophesy the word. Can I hear an amen, somebody? Death and life is in the power of the tongue. Death and life is in what? The? Say power. The word power in Hebrew is a word yad. The word yad means hand. So that verse should be translated literally. Death and life is in the hand of your tongue. Your tongue has got a hand. What do you do with your hands? You grab things. Your tongue is a grabber. Your tongue is a grubber. The 
I shall decree a thing and it shall be established number four so you're going to prophesy the word tonight when I lay hands on you we're going to speak the word over your life to break any kind of barrenness whether it is biological financial professional personal territorial we're going to break it and number four no barrenness of any kind has ever been stopped without the planting of a seed biological barrenness is broken by a seed called a sperm agricultural barrenness territorial barrenness is broken by the planting of a seed financial barrenness is broken by the planting of a seed money are you hearing me somebody it is a seed so your prayer your praise and prophetic declaration tonight as you sit under the as you stand on the sound of my voice there will be no more barrenness over your life the Bible tells you in the book of Hosea by a prophet the Lord took Israel out of Egypt and by a prophet he preserved them Elisha broke territorial barrenness biological barrenness financial barrenness by releasing a word can I hear amen somebody so your prayer your praise prophetic declaration and the planting of a seed the very first words of God to humanity was be fruitful and multiply God hates barrenness barrenness is a curse today I have an offer for you of a book my book exposing and overcoming the spirit of barrenness and then this brand new CD a new season of fruitfulness you need to order this book right now and this CD the price is $25 the book is exposing and overcoming the spirit of barrenness it is time for you to break barrenness out of your life it is time for you to break fruitlessness out of your life it is time for you to be fruitful for your life to be fruitful for your family to be fruitful for your business to be fruitful for your church to be fruitful so order this book right now exposing and overcoming this from barrenness plus this new CD a new season of fruitfulness the price is only $25 plus shipping and handling call the number on your screen 502-523-4407 or you can order online at glenarecchion.org Go ye into all the world is a mandate given to every believer. However, not everybody is called to go on the mission field. But you can still play your part in the Great Commission and partner with Glenn Arecchion Ministries. Today, consider to be one of Dr. Glenn's faithful, financial, and prayerful partners.